Welcome back to Biggie Outdoors at the top of the hour. We welcome in those just tuning in. And for those of you who have been listening, we're headed into another great hour of outdoor radio with Biggie and Brandon here at Biggie Outdoor Studios. This hour is brought to you by one of our great supporters at Outdoor Edge Knives and Cutlery, makers of the swing blade and other great tools for the outdoorsman. Check them out at OutdoorEdge.com and get yourself one of the best hunting knives or cutlery sets you'll ever own. Also buy Koala Buck Coolers, portable walk-in coolers for the sportsman, a great way to save your game when you're traveling on a hunt and want to keep your meat cool. Find them online at koalabuck.com. Now, stay tuned for more Biggie Outdoor Radio. Biggie Outdoors, located at Cedar Creek, is reopening its doors soon after its new remodeling. Home to the area's first and only big game hunting museum, with educational exhibits displaying animals from around the world and facts around the hunter's contributions to their survival. Pick up some unique souvenirs and gifts from the museum and from the Big E TV shows. Meet the pro staff from Big E TV and Big E Outdoor Radio, a great place to stop in with the whole family. And while you're there, book your next hunting trip with the Big E Outdoors Professional Hunters. With over 21 personal hunting destinations worldwide, you'll be sure to find a quality getaway with the Biggie Outdoors destinations. Biggie Outdoors is also home to Adrenaline High Geographic. Check us out online at BiggieOutfitters.com and register to win a free hunt. Biggie Outdoors at Cedar Creek. Welcome back, folks. We are at the 2016 ATA show, which is the Archery Trade Association show. I think I got that right, but I'm going to find out in just a second because I'm with... Jay Ma- okay. Mackinich. Okay, I didn't want to butcher it, so I was kind of waiting for you to lead me into it there, Jay. And Teresa? Johnson. Teresa Johnson. All right. And so what we're doing here is we're going to tell you folks what the ATA is, how long it's been around, what it's out here to do, because this is not an open to the public show. This is not a consumer show, and people have to actually have some sort of a store to get here. So first of all, I guess, tell me what is ATA, how long it's been around, a little bit like that, if you would, Jay. Archie Trade Association is uh, 63 years old. We were founded in 1953, and it's the trade association for everyone involved in the archery and bow hunting business. And that means everybody from manufacturers to retailers to distributors and media uh, to all the different facets of business that it takes to make it go. Um, the, the difference between our show, a trade show, and what people around the country call consumer shows is a trade show is a business to business show, meaning that on one side of the counter are exhibitors who have manufactured product that they're there to offer to retailers, which means that retailers are looking at those products and looking at what kind of pricing and quantity they can buy today that's going to show up in stores anywhere from the next month to, especially for bow hunters, in the June, July, August, September, and especially those small months when bow hunters are shopping. The reason these are not open to the public is, quite frankly, the kind of pricing that a manufacturer gives the retailers not the pricing the consumer is going to get. Everybody understands that concept, I think. And then there's more than just pricing. These manufacturers are working with retailers to discuss not only how they're going to transfer product to them and how the retailer is going to buy the product, but who's going to market it. How are we going to support it? What's the flow of product going to be? How is the inventory going to flow from the manufacturer to the retailer? All those things are huge problems. How is it going to be distributed through what kind of channels? When and how do they want it to come? What kind of communication is going to go out in print, online, through social media and all the other channels? How will the radio and TV ads run? Uh, When will Patrick and, and, and guys like you have the opportunity to hawk these products? What's the timing of that? Timing is everything in business. You don't want to hawk those products on January 20th, even though our show is right now. You don't want to hawk them on March 20th. You want to hawk them on June 20th or July 20th when the guys are listening. So I know a lot of consumers probably think that sounds like we're overcomplicating something, but you can never forget that these 10,000 people who gathered here today and 720 exhibitors, uh, 1,200 independent retailers, they're here because they make a living in this business. And when you make a living in the business, it's not only not a game, you can't leave anything to chance. So it takes us really three or four days to hammer all that out and make the business work. And when it works really well, frankly, most archers and bow hunters are absolutely thrilled. Well, I'll tell you what, you explained that very well to us. How long, I don't remember if you told me, how long has the ATA been around? 
Uh, we were founded in 1953, so we're 63 years old and been around quite a while. Um, we've matured through a lot of different years, but really for the last probably 20 years and certainly the last 15, we have been the single only archery and bowing trade association in the world. Uh, we represent every facet of archery and bow hunting, which is kind of fun in the sense that we're not some huge industry like uh, oh, you know, automobiles or something else where every facet is segregated into different pieces. We're all under one roof. And the other thing is people kind of forget too, the rest of the world is here. Uh, we've got probably 30 countries. About 15 or 20 percent of our booths and activity is international. So there's also that other dimension which quite frankly would be something most consumers would really just not understand at all when you got guys coming from other countries. I met this morning with a guy from Sweden, a guy from Finland, and we spent most of the morning simply talking about when, where, and how they're going to distribute, market, and sell product in the Scandinavian countries. And So that's the kind of business that goes on here, and that's really what a trade show really is. Well, to give folks an idea, the stuff that we see here right now is the stuff that you're going to see uh, our pro staff people on all the different hunting TV shows that we watch on, on Pursuit Channel and Hunt Channel and uh, the Sportsman and Outdoor. All, the, all of those celebrities also come here too. They want to see what they're going to be using. They're looking for the new products. And then when you go to your consumer shows in uh, Dixie Deer Classic in Raleigh and the Birmingham shows and places like that, that's how these people get that product. They know ahead of time what they're going to be uh, stocking on their shelves and putting into their stores and this is the place where all the new stuff comes out the new ideas come out and uh, I will tell you that I've walked around this store or this store excuse me this show uh, for three days from opening until closing and I still didn't get to see it all so and it happens to me every year mm -hmm. <laughs> No, it is, it is huge and it's a lot to take in and it's really tough too for a lot of retail operations but I think that's where again retail and business operations especially approach the show differently. They sit down and spend weeks and months before the show planning what they're going to do. In fact, the show really starts uh, for us back in April. Exhibitors pick their booths. Most of the show floor is sold out sometime in early June. Retailers start registering sometime in mid-summer. Then through the fall, a lot of them are actually planning what they're going to do. And Even though a lot of people only see and begin to hear about new product from our show going forward, all that new product was out in October. In fact, to be honest with you, a lot of the celebrities you're talking about have not only seen the product, they've already had it in their hands and they're shooting it. They're not using it publicly, but they're shooting it. And frankly, what happens here, even though people come in and they see the celebrities and they see them running around, they sort of look at the celebrities as different from and separate from the manufacturers and the retailers, and yet they are a paid part of our industry just like anybody else. The manufacturers right. sponsor these celebrities, they come to the show, they're already aware of the new product, and guess what they're doing? They're not really signing autographs really for fun. They're there to let retailers know how and why a bow is a really great bow. They try to help market that bow, and more than anything, they let retailers know that if you go ahead and you work with the newest uh, Hoyt bow, Bowtech bow, Matthews bow, G5 bow, whatever the bow is, they really are letting them know that next fall, you're going to see shows out there that are going to be marketing that product so the retailer feels assured, hey, if I carry that bow, there's going to be great a great deal of public advertising and activity going on that will support it. It's a very integrated, complicated, really kind of thing in this sense. It's almost as if you're filming, or as you do in your business, you're recording mm -hmm. months and months ahead of time a whole lot of things that are going to start to, to happen by, what, mid-summer through the fall. Yeah. Especially where we where we where we where we are are pertaining to to bow hunting. Well, I know that uh, every year you see some of the greatest new products. So one of the things that I always find very interesting here, and I did spend some time. We did quite a few interviews on the show already uh, in your innovation zone, and I don't know where the concept for that came up, but I think it's a great uh, it's a great addition because what when we come here, we know that if we want to see what the newest invention is or something new that's coming out. We all head to the innovation zone and see who has been staying awake at night trying to come up with, with, a, with a better product of some kind or something new. That's right, and, and it's really been one of our most popular areas. And, and it came about because, you know, if, if uh, a lot of our big companies, you know, whether you're talking about, uh, you know, big brands, uh, you know, especially like the bow brands or sure. the aero brands and that sort of, if they come up with a new gadget or an idea, they have a huge marketing arm and a huge platform to push that idea out. What we've really lacked over the years and what we really needed badly 
was something like this innovation zone where individuals who were able to come up with a great idea but who don't have a company, maybe don't even have any way other than just simply to bring a gadget with them and show them, they needed a platform to get out in front of people because at the end of the day, we're also about trying to find the next best thing. When, when's the next Whisker Biscuit going to come out? You know, that, that came out and, and took the world by storm. Remember the Sims Limb Savers? Those right. came out and took the world by storm. Look at them now. Look at them now. Yeah. A few years ago, no one knew what obsession bows were. Now, all of a sudden, they're really one of the hottest, latest, greatest. So, um, all of those things started, by the way, in the innovation zone. And one of the reasons why it's there is so those inventors, entrepreneurs, that have a great idea, if they can put it together and bring it to the show, they have a platform uh, to push that. The um, um, guy's really distracted. The, uh, uh, they have a platform to push that from, but even more important, for a lot of your bow hunters listening that have sat in a tree stand, and I know a ton of them have, and they come up with, gosh, it would be so neat if somebody made this. And some of them actually go far enough to make it. Right. What they need to know is, despite the size of this show and the size and clout of a lot of the companies, if they make that gadget and make that product and they get a hold of us and it really looks like what, th what we think it is, they'll have a place here at the show. And just as you said, you're going to troll through there and see it. And here's another interesting dimension of the Innovation Zone people don't realize sometimes. You go down and you see the trinkets and the innovations, and you always wonder, next year, what happened to that guy? Well, sometimes that guy was standing there, and somebody walked by. Sometimes it's often two or three guys. They take a look, they listen, they whisper. Sometimes they come back, like right now on this last day, and they ask the guy, would you be willing to talk about selling your product? So they sit down and talk with him. All his hard work, all his inventiveness, all his great ideas, he sells it and they take care of the patent and distribution. For a lot of little guys, that's the right way to do it. Because you don't have the ability to market it, you don't have the ability to distribute it, you don't have the ability to protect it with a patent and that sort of thing. And so it's kind of one of those neat American stories. Other guys will go back and maybe push that product. Some of them, some of them go back and they're overwhelmed with what's happened. We had a guy here one year that came in the Innovation Zone and showed a great product. He clearly and obviously felt, I'm gonna do this myself. He thought that was a clear conclusion. Like I said, it was obvious to him that's the only way to do business, the only way I'm going to do it myself. By the end of the show, he had orders for 70000 And I spoke with him a week later because I had heard about it, and I said, you took orders from I don't know how many retailers, how many people. Are you prepared for what's going to happen if you don't fill those orders? Because there's a lot of difference between making seven of something, or 70, or 700, or 7,000 and 70,000. That's right, yeah. And um, and so, uh, you know, it's sort of like, be careful what you wish for if you have success. Because this is a big, big show. Yep. And there are guys walking around this show like Cabela's, if they like your product, they may, tell, they may say, I'll take seven, but what they mean is seven tractor trailer loads to go in their 57 stores. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly, well, I can tell you that uh, the show was, in my mind, a great success again. I come here every year to see it. Hi everybody and welcome back to Big E Outdoor Radio. You are listening to our coverage of the 2016 uh, ATA show in Louisville, Kentucky. And again, this is where all the greatest products in archery are released every single year. This is where all the manufacturers go to unveil their latest and greatest, the newest in bows, arrows, broadheads, optics, you name it. If it has to do with archery hunting, you're going to find it at the ATA shows. You can check out their website online and learn a whole lot about what it, what that show entails. We just did an interview with Jay, the president and CEO of the ATA show. He explained to us what it's all about, how long it's been around. This association is set up so that the manufacturers can release and unveil their newest products. New manufacturers can break into the industry and get their stuff to the dealers. This is where the dealers go to place their preseason orders, get everything going so that the manufacturers know how much stuff to build and have it ready to go so that come June and July, it gets shipped to your local archery store. Now, some of this stuff you're going to find in the stores already this week being shipped in because everybody's there making their preseason orders. So without any more... Uh, delay, let's get right back to our coverage of the 2016 ATA show and see what else is new out there for some great products in archery hunting. 
Well, we're continuing coverage from the 2016 ATA show here with uh, Big E Outdoors on uh, ESPN 100.5 here. So what we're doing is uh, stopping by all the, the great booths that we run into that have some new products for 2016. And, and as I came through, I ran into a really nice fella from Jim Fletcher Archery. And Terry, Terry, you're the owner, right? Yeah, well, part owner, yeah. My father-in-law is Jim Fletcher, and uh, I'm the outlaw. Oh, okay. Well, that works good too. What I, what caught my eye when I came by was all the releases that uh, that you guys have here, and of course, it looks like you make uh, peeps and peeps and some and some other things for bows. But uh, it was it was the selection of releases. They've got everything from the the, the clip release or whatever you caliper call it, type. the caliper type, and then we have the the hook, the hook. and. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of different choices here for people in different colors, obviously, but also you have the little thumb releases too, or the little handheld ones too, right? We call it the Jimmy T. It's it's a uh, a three finger thumb style release that actually can clip on the bowstring, and mm -hmm. you can leave it on the bowstring if you need to. You know, it shoots shoots off a loop. That's what you really want to do, mm -hmm. and it's a very comfortable handle. Uh, can be set heavy or hair trigger uh, with no travel. That that also was something that I noticed is that all of the releases that I've seen here, now I don't know if they all are, but most of the ones that I looked at have adjustable triggers on them. And the one thing that we found out when we were out there hunting is that when you can adjust your trigger on your release, it's going to improve your accuracy. It certainly is. And the thing that I try to tell people, particularly hunting, is don't set them too light because you're under a stressful situation and, and you're going to shoot that before you're really ready just because you're nervous. That's my my take on it and I've seen it happen. My my cousin uh, uh, missed a really nice buck because he was... Because he was too soon. Yeah, he, and he wasn't... He, he, it's, it's not something he wanted to do at the time. Right. But, uh, you know, it, and when you're going to go hunt like this, you need to back it off, make it a little heavier and practice with it. And, and don't expect to just go out there and, and, and uh, start shooting without working with your, your equipment. You know that just from the end. But a lot of, you'd be surprised at the people that'll they'll get ready for hunting season a week before it happens. And uh, Too many do. Too many too do. Many do. And I think yeah. that you should be punching paper all year long. That's right. Well, these things uh, give everybody all the choices they want. I would imagine that we have... A wide variety of retail prices here, so you yes. must have a release that fits everybody's budget here. Pretty much, and we try to keep it affordable for everybody. There's releases out there that you can buy two hundred dollars, and I don't, I just don't think you have to spend that kind of money to get a quality product. And these are all have a lifetime warranty, and I mean a real warranty, not a Hasbro warranty. Some toy stuff that if you have a problem, I'm going to take care of you, and that's the end of that. And, uh, and uh, uh, I get I get stuff back once in a while that's 30 years old, and we'll we'll rebuild it, and uh, no questions asked, and that's the end of that. We just uh, I I believe that you should have something that's going to last you a lifetime. That's good customer service. So what kind of retail prices? What's your high end, and what's your low end on releases? This one that you had picked up, it's the uh, that that handheld uh, three finger thumb trigger release. That one retails for eighty one dollars. And uh, 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 you'll go down to oh, about 75 for the clip-on type. The caliper one is around $50. Uh, uh, so there's a, there's a pretty good range, but uh, uh, it's like I said before. You don't. I don't. I don't think that you should have to uh, leverage the farm to be able to buy good equipment. And I mean, you can do it. Uh, I just don't think you get anything more, but value mm -hmm. this way. You'll be able to see some pictures of the releases on our Facebook pages, Biggie Outdoor Radio on Facebook, Biggie Outdoors on Facebook, and our website, uh, BiggieOutdoors.com. And we're actually going to put a miniature uh, little video clip with some, some information on some of our upcoming television shows, too, so you can get a look at it. But it looks to me like you got a wide variety of the, the popular colors that are in, the neon greens and the neon pinks, and uh, we got we got the one clip on or excuse me what yeah one hook that runs with the thumb one runs with your trigger finger so just about anything you can think of is here how do people find you and, and where can they order one of these we're at uh, fletcherarchery.com 
uh, and that's probably the easiest way. Our phone number is on the website, and th there's a contact with the email. That's fine. You can call us anytime. We answer the phone. We don't. You will not get a machine if we're there. Uh, it, I, I just hate that. <laughs> yeah. Just hate it. So again, that's uh, FletcherArchery.com, and you can talk right to Terry. See? So you're actually going to get somebody that's going to answer the phone and not some big long answering service. Sounds like exactly, and great customer service, and also they should be looking for these in their local archery shops. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, and if they're not there, tell the guy. I sure wish you'd order some so I can take a look. Yes, sir. Yes, there you go. Well, we'll we'll do our best to try to talk some more folks into into uh, putting these into their shops because I really think it's a great selection of uh, releases. And go ahead. That's when we got started. In 1960, so they've been in business 56 years you've been in business. That's correct. How long have you been doing this show? Since the very beginning, and I can't, when, when uh, it was started by a guy named Stan Shiras, and, uh, and I, I can't remember how far, how long ago it was. It's been quite some time, and then the ATA took it over. Yep. Uh, okay, is there anything else you can think of that you'd like to tell people about? products that you have and and uh, again what what's the newest one what's this year's 2016 model this is the newest one which is actually a, a wrist model uh, you know it has a wrist strap that that shoots with your thumb but it also has this post on the opposite side of the trigger which the, it's a thumb trigger that is kind of a stabilizing bar and when you pull back you can it it helps you it helps you pull heavier weights if that's what you wish to do. But you also kind of put your thumb on the trigger and squeeze against that post with your hand and it'll go off. You're not actually triggering the release. You're doing it where it becomes a real surprise. And people that have target panic, which a, a lot of people that have been shooting index finger releases for years, uh, uh, you will experience this eventually. And, uh, uh, this helps people get through that, or if you start with something like this, you won't develop it because your thumb is just not as educated as your index finger, and that's just kind of how it falls. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, if uh, again, everybody needs to check you out, and I was glad that I stopped by and seen this because we're actually looking for some new releases anyway. So we'll uh, hopefully we'll get a hold of some of these uh, Fletcher Archery releases, and we'll use them on our show. You'll be able to see them like that, and and again. FletcherArchery.com. Um, there's also a phone number there on the website. I, we can give it to you here too. It's 760 uh, 379 2589. Sounds like they'll be able to get a hold of you directly. And I, I'm getting a vision. I, I, I see some of these in your future showing up at your mailbox. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds great. We'll, uh, we'll be back in touch with you soon, and I wish you a great show. Thanks for visiting with us. And if there's anything else you want to add, go ahead. We're, we're good. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Hey, there you have it, folks. Another great product at the ATA show. And this one here is actually a manufacturer that's been around for many years. Now, all the years I've been at the ATA show, I probably walk by this guy's booth every single time. Never even noticed he was there. Like I told you, there's over 700 exhibitors down there. And you just cannot hit it all in one year. I run into some of our uh, good friends who own archery shops and I even had to take them and show them some of the great products I found while I was down there. They'd been walking the show for three days and hadn't even found them all. Uh, so this is definitely uh, a place to see the new stuff and, and even though your dealer might have been there, when you hear about some of these great products, you check them out. What you got to do is just head on down to your local dealer and say, hey, uh, how come you don't have this product in your shop? You need to get it. Check it out. Uh, they may not have seen it at the ATA just because the place is so big and so great. We'll be right back with some more Big E Outdoor Radio. So stay tuned, and we're going to come right back and show you some more great products. Welcome back to Big E Outdoor Radio. This segment is brought to you by Brews Brothers, located on Highway X in Weston, just off of Highway 29. Fresh burger ground daily from country fresh meats and awesome hand cut fries with all the tasty seasonings to choose from. They got plenty of tap brews with 35 beers on tap. 
If you haven't made your way on over to Bruce Brothers yet, you need to head on over and check them out. And tell them Big E sent you, and they'll give you a little something special from us just for mentioning it. But head on over there, and you'll be hooked up with the best burgers in town. That's Brews Brothers on Highway X in Weston. All right, we're continuing our coverage here at the 2016 ATA Show and checking out all the latest and greatest products, everything that's new for 2016 and, and bringing it to you. And again, you can you can catch pictures of all this stuff on our Facebook page, Biggie Outdoor Radio on Facebook and Biggie Outdoors on Facebook. Also our website, again, uh, if you if you want to see some video, drop drop us a line we'll send you some video but we are going to post some video links too on there with some of this product and i'm at a booth now pine ridge archery and i'm going to tell you the reason that i stopped by here so everybody knows is there's a lot of flashy colors in this place and we all know that we're tricking out our bows because us rednecks like two things tricked out we like our bows tricked out we like our trucks tricked out and this is definitely the place to go if you're looking to to really make your bow individual and unique and functional at the same time so I'm here with, with the owner, Jim Broberg, yep. and Brian, I'm not even going to try your last name. Bychowski. Okay, Brian Bychowski uh, with, uh, with uh, Pine Ridge Archery and the Nitro Series. So some of these products fall under the Nitro Series. So first of all, why don't you guys just tell me a little bit about your company and what you all make. Well, we make pretty much everything that's going to go on your bow from stabilizers, wrist slings, uh, peep sights, speed buttons, um, on and on and on. And we make it, I believe it's in 10 different colors now. Uh, again, you can individualize your bow, whatever your personality is, we've got the color for you. Well, and a couple years ago, actually maybe more than that now, um, Jim and I were talking and Jim had wanted to come out with a lot of these products that some of them existed we wanted to make them better but we also wanted another hook and we realized that colors were going to be an up-and-coming thing and we were kind of you know one of the first companies to really branch out and do a lot of colors and some dealers didn't get the the concept didn't like the option but the, the consumers won and they their voices were heard and colors are the thing nowadays and it doesn't matter what product um, you're putting on your bow people want it to to be individual like you said they want to be unique and uh, that's what our products do and we're also made in the USA, you know, right in Illinois. We manufacture all this stuff ourselves, and um, just it's, it's worked out really well. And the, the the colors have really been a good thing for us to to bring our products into the market. Are you a Bears fan? I am, unfortunately, right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can say we are. <laughs> yeah, since since you said you're from Illinois, I kind of figured that right off. And then I started looking to see if there were any Packers colors here, but uh, well, the closest we get is lime green. But well, we charge we charge double for the Packer colors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is uh, again, you know, like like for guys that get these bows in, and, and the flashy colors are the thing. You know, some of the some of the bows are coming in, and they got the lightning green or the oranges and things like that. But there's only so much that come on your bow when you get it. And as I walked by here, I noticed that we had the uh, wrist slings, you got st uh, stabilizers and silencers and they can get all the different colors and uh, uh, the peeps, you even got the peep uh, cords and the peeps. Yep. So, Well, and you know, here's the thing, when, you, when a shop is selling a bow or they're selling any kind of product, they're selling the, the customer. It doesn't matter if it's if the, the look of it is functional in the woods, you're selling what the customer wants. And, and nowadays people want to match their sports team. Like you said, Bears, maybe it's their college team, maybe it's their, whatever. They like to have a certain color that they relate to and that's about them. You know, brown and black and camo is all fine. We have all that as well. But nowadays people want to be individual. They want to, they want to stand out from the crowd and these kind of things are essential nowadays. It's not a matter of an option for a color, it's what color do I want, so. I was, I was, trying to guess while you're talking what your newest thing was for 2016 i'm guessing it's a stabilizer is that your new thing it is it's uh we actually came out with the hunter series last year and um, we just did a different variation with more of an anodized black finish with adding accent colors to it yep. in nine different colors we in uh women being the, the fastest growing segment of the archery and hunting world we have a lot of women customers of course they were one of the first to jump onto the color thing and We've had many women customers ask us for a turquoise option. So that was the other thing we did new this year. Every product we have now is available in turquoise. And uh, the women at the show here have definitely responded to it. So it's going to be, you know, we like to call it kind of the new pink. Pink's not going away, but turquoise is definitely going to be a contender this year. But no Packer colors? No, 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 no. 
<laughs> We've got the yellow. That's all you <laughs> No, you can do it if you want. <laughs> all right. So I see you got veins. What else we got? Uh, what, what all falls under the nitro series? What do they have to find under the Pine Ridge seri- uh, name? Or where do they have to go to get the stuff, really? Well, pretty much the whole company, when we first started, this is our 19th year we're starting right now. We started as a tree stand accessory company. And we kind of drifted out of that for numerous reasons. And then we, we, we kind of ended up where we are today. Um, initially, we came out our first, you know, the product that actually kind of fit on a bow was the kisser buttons. And what we did is, you know, put a twist on that from the standpoint, most of the kisser buttons that have been out were hard plastic. A lot of times they'd cut your lip. And the trend kind of got away from them because a lot of guys just didn't like, a lot of guys just didn't like that. But uh, we made them out of a softer material, so they're durable. At the same time, soft on your lip. Got them in two sizes. So if you're hunting with a mask, you've got the larger size. And uh, that particular product doesn't fall into the nitro category, although it. You know, we didn't create the nitro category at that point. Yeah. It was after that, so they kind of <laughs> fell out of that. But it would be nitro, yeah. So, <laughs> but the nitro buttons, the nitro XL buttons, they all kind of uh, the nitro veins, they all kind of fall under that brand. But it, it really, it's all Pine Ridge archery, to be honest with you. And it, and it whether it's Pine Ridge or nitro, we make it all and we sell it all through our, our archery shops throughout the entire country and and internationally as well. Um, Either, or you can go online to Pine Ridge Archery, of course, and oh, PineRidgeArchery.com and find all of them, too. There's so many products here to really get into a price range, but it looks like pretty affordable stuff. Yes. Uh, the next question that I got is tell people, I'm sure you got a social media page which, and, and a good website. So if it's not in their local archery shop, how do they get this stuff? They want it. They're going to go to PineRidgeArchery.com. You can also find us at uh, Facebook.com slash PineRidgeArchery. Or we're on Twitter, Twitter.com slash PineRidgeArcher. There's no Y at the end there, so Pine Ridge Archer for Twitter. And uh, Instagram as well, Pine Ridge Archer. So we're, we, we, anywhere socially, uh, YouTube, Facebook, all that kind of stuff, we're there, as well as uh, PineRidgeArchery.com as the hub. All right. Well, I know that we will post some photos of this on our Facebook pages and, and, and our websites and things like that. Um, we'll do a little bit of a video here of the booth to give people an idea of what you all have. I, it doesn't look like there's a lot that we have to worry about demonstrating or anything, but uh, we want to get some pictures and shots of these bows that are behind me because you got them done and got one and uh, it's a purple bow and it's got all the turquoise options on it. We got the bright orange, which I know some of the guys on our staff like. Pink, pink is popular. All the women that are out there like their camo with just a little touch of pink. Yep. And uh, it really accents the bow really nicely. And then, of course, you got the red and, and uh, the high, and the lime green and anything else that a guy would want. But if you're looking to make your bow just stand out, be your own, here's a way to do it. You can uh, go to PineRidgeArchery.com and check out the Nitro Series stuff. All the way from the veins to the kitzer buttons. It looks like you got wraps. And, and is there anything I'm missing? Actually, we do have a lot of tools. We're known for uh, some of the best tools in the industry, to, to be honest. Uh, the Archer's Allen wrench, everyone knows it as the yellow handle wrench. Yep. That's uh, guaranteed for life, not to strip or round off or it gets replaced. So any every archer should have a good Allen wrench set in their in their bag, and the Archer's Allen wrench, truthfully, is the best. The, yep. o- the other item that I would definitely say every archer needs to have is our first product we ever came out with, which was the Arrow Inspector. It's a spin checker for your arrows. It'll show you not only if the shaft is straight, but if your insert is crooked, if your uh, your knock is out of alignment, your broadhead is out of balance, any of that. So every arrow should be spun first to make sure it's going to fly true. If, you know, you spend all this time, money, and effort to make sure you get in front of that, that animal that you're going after, that arrow needs to fly right. So you got to be sure. When... I was looking back there, just as you said it, uh, folks, when you're thinking about who Pine Ridge Archery is, have you seen those yellow-handled Allen wrenches? I got two of them, I think, in my box, and I know my son has one. Uh, you'll know who the company is as soon as you see them because uh, because that, that is definitely something that is card. very brand identifiable there. And also that arrow uh, inspector, I have seen that around, and I think you can even buy that in a lot of the big box stores. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much available everywhere. You can go to any of the big boxes, the small shops, online. And it's a staple item, truthfully. Like, just to reiterate what I said, you can't take all this time and effort and money to go out and get the, the, the animal of a lifetime without knowing your arrow's going to fly right. So We always say, if it doesn't spin right, it's not going to fly right. And that's, that's true, for sure. I've had that happen. 
<laughs> well, I'll tell you that uh, you can you can start watching some of our shows because we're going to be decking our bows out with some of this uh, nitro series and, and the Pine Ridge Archery products just because it makes it really nice to be able to make your bow unique. Your arrows can match. Everything can match. Uh, so, and, and oh, you know what? The other thing you were going to tell me about is that tube. Uh, for the guys that are old timers like me that like to have the tube to pull your peep straight, um, how many times have you sat in a tree and your your tube is dry rotted and you look at it and it's breaking, or you pull back to shoot something and it breaks off? You got a you got a cure for that here with yours. We do. We have a because yeah, the, the, the tubing you're talking about is latex and latex does rot over time. Actually, a very short time. But we came out with silicone. Silicone will literally last forever. It will never dry rot or crack. And uh, it's certainly durable, will last a long time. Not saying it'll last forever, but it's going to last a whole lot longer than yeah. latex. Yeah, it, it'll take thousands of shots. And I mean, when it finally does break, you're going to get your lifespan way longer than any kind of latex tubing or rubber tubing. And what, what's what's the killer about rubber or latex? A lot of guys will be able to relate to. The season's over, they put their bow away. If they don't shoot 3D or something like that, their bow may sit until, of course, July or August when they're going to pull out again, and it's dry rotted right off the bat. So. Uh, silicone will not do that and that's why we wanted to make sure we get, we offered a better product so the silicone peep tubing is is way superior to the others well and by the time it breaks you're probably looking for a new bow or, or you just think about changing your colors anyway so that way the bow looks different exactly. than people think you got a new bow we're continuing our coverage of the 2016 ATA Archery Trade Association show bringing you some of the latest and greatest products for those of you that are really big into the archery hunting world and you know the ATA is a place to come not only to see what is new, what each one of these companies is releasing, whether it's a bow, a sight, uh, cameras, uh, arrows, broadheads, you name it. we got it all. But there's a lot of innovative products and new things that are popping up. And this year, as I'm going by, I run into the coolest looking machine that I have seen ever, I think, for hunters. And being that, being that brand in an IRX military, this thing here really appeals. You'll have to check out pictures of it on our Facebook page, Biggie Outdoor Radio on Facebook, Biggie Outdoors on Facebook, and BiggieOutdoors.com. We'll throw some pictures on here, some little uh, video clips as well to show you what this thing actually is. It's called the Torque Off-Road Electric Buggy, I guess, but Torque Off-Road Electric Company, and this thing uh, is probably one of the baddest little uh, vehicles that I've seen. Like I said, it looks similar, folks, to something that you think special forces would drop out of a plane and use to get around it's got the the aggressive off-road tires uh completely electric and looks like it goes pretty fast so i'm here with a spokesman for the company rick deandrea and uh rick if you want to tell me a little bit how fast does this thing go first of all its top speed is 30 miles an hour um three and a half hours on a charge and it only weighs a thousand pounds so when you step on that pedal it tries to take the front wheels off the ground. It just flies. Well, it's got. It looks like it's got a lot of grip, a lot of torque. Not like your typical jacked-up uh, golf cart that you folks are used to seeing out there. So, if you're looking to get to and from your stands, especially if you're an outfitter that's listening to us, some of our outfitters, and you're in the 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 mode of taking clients to and from the stands, and you don't want to make any noise, this thing is definitely a hunting vehicle. It's made for hunters, made for off-road. Uh, it's got the rack on the back. You can put things on. I see you got a bow holder up there, but it's quiet. So, uh, am I missing anything? You no, know, you hit all the hot spots. It is a totally silent hunting machine. It's uh, it, it's just as lethal as you are hunting. I mean, you when you pull up next to this thing and you're in a jacked up golf cart with camo on it, and you look at both of them, you just want to go jump in this. So I think. I think everyone's going to enjoy this. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something that when you look at it, it doesn't look like it's been converted from something that two guys were going down and, and, and whacking balls around the golf course with one day and then all of a sudden converted it. This thing is made for it. So uh, it looks like it's made pretty much out of all lightweight materials, and it's made in the U.S., right? It's made in Birmingham, Alabama, and... Um this quarter we're setting up dealers so they'll be pushed out to dealers in the next 90 days that's great 
So we're going to try to point this thing out to maybe even bring some brochures back and point this thing out to some of the dealers up in our area because, folks, I'm telling you, you need to uh, you need to check these guys out online. It looks like it's uh, torque-vle.com. Is that right? Correct. Torque-vle. VLE stands for very light electric. We're the lightest off-road vehicle on the market today. All right. And again, again, that's torque, T-O-R-Q. Dash vle.com definitely want to go and check this thing out once you see pictures of it see a little bit of video how this thing runs check out our facebook pages as well uh, you're going to be as interested in this thing as i am and what's the weight limit as far as uh, hauling people and, and gear well it's rated for three thousand pounds we're only at a thousand so it's uh it's a pretty utilitarian vehicle it'll pull a light utility trailer um, back racks rated for 350 pounds. You can put a rack on the front, and it's all tubular steel, so you could just drape the gear across the front and tie it down. It's uh, at that kind of a weight rating. You could even get a couple of big old corn-fed Wisconsin hunters in that thing. It looks like so. <laughs> sure uh, uh, the other thing yesterday, uh, the you guys were telling me that you also have a control kit or conversion kit for handicapped folks to be able to control it from the steering wheel. We sure do. We've got a push rock system that's uh, made by the same folks that outfit vehicles for those that are um, um, paraplegic. Uh, so all the hand, the brakes and, and uh, accelerator, everything's on the steering wheel. And it, it allows folks to get back out into the game and be not only more mobile, but more mobile at high speed, which... There's a, a big void in the market right now for any kind of a vehicle that will allow folks to do that. I have been myself uh, to a lot of the hunting destinations. We ride on Rangers and we ride on all these vehicles. And then by the time you get off, you smell like exhaust. It made a lot of noise getting to the stand. And, you know, the argument always is that the deer get used to that and they they think you're out there feeding. But in all reality, they just simply know you're there. This thing, being electric, Seems like it's nice and quiet. About the only noise that they're going to hear is the two guys on there talking, more than likely. That's right. Whatever you're rolling over, that's what you're going to hear. All right. Well, is there anything else you can think of that we should touch on for folks? Other than if they want one right now, the best thing to do is go online and talk to you guys and order it direct. That's right. And if you're interested in being a dealer, you can go to our website and click on dealer application. And um, we'll get right back with you as fast as we can. All right, and I'm sure that, you know, anything, folks, that comes with uh, this kind of technology and this, this look and is this good definitely is going to carry a higher retail value. This isn't your $500 or, or even a $5,000 uh, piece of equipment. But when you look at it, it you, can, you can see why, and it's definitely worth it. Like I said, it's solid quality. I, I'm watching a video right now in the booth of, of a guy pulling a, a knee border. He's driving along the side of the river and, and there's a knee border in the water just tearing it up. So it, it definitely has uh, plenty of power. Uh, what is the retail value or the retail price on this thing? The single seater MSRP is gonna be 14.5 and the side by side is 15.5. Okay, so it's kind of up there, or not up there, but right in line with just about any other UTV that's out there on the market. That's about what you're going to pay for something that's good and 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 looks this this quality. And and again, it looks like you got the LED headlights on it. And, and this thing is totally uh, uh, up to up to date with uh, with all the fancy stuff that anybody would want to put on it today. I mean, I can't think of anything else a guy'd want to do to deck it out, really. Yeah, it has a uh, Curtis controller on it too. So if you've got a a young adult that you want to <clears throat> restrict the speed, um, you can go into the controller and set the speed at 10 miles an hour, 5 miles an hour, strap them into a four-point harness and know they're not going to be falling out. Um, and it's just a, a great crossover vehicle and that when you're not hunting, you're comfortable off-roading with it with your friends. And I was also asked yesterday, what if, uh, what if I'm not hunting and I'm not concerned about the, the noise and I just want to go on long rides with it, what a guy can do. And I was told that, you know, the rack obviously in the back will hold plenty. You put a little bitty generator on there with them little Honda generators. It'll still make less noise than your conventional gas ATVs. 
And then if you wanted to go on longer rides, you can, because the generator can actually charge the batteries while you're driving it, right? Correct. Correct. And if you get to a, your destination, you want to recharge the batteries, you just crank it up, and when you're, when you're ready to go, you're charged and you cruise on back. How long does it take to charge it once it dies? If they're totally depleted, five to seven hours. So usually folks play all day, because no one is running it three and a half hours straight. They get to their destination, turn it off, there's still lots and lots of charge. It also has regenerative, I can never say this, regenerative braking. So we've gotten it down to 90% charge on the batteries and gone down a lot of steep hills and it throws a charge back into the batteries and we've got them back up to 100. Oh, okay. Well, that's, uh, that's good to know. So again, look for the pictures for online from us folks uh, or check these guys out directly online themselves, torque-vle.com. It's T torque with a Q, T-O-R-Q-V-L-E for very light elect electronics, uh, dot com. And uh, uh, like I said, anybody that's out there looking for a new UTV, this definitely is something you need to check out before you go spending your money on one of them loud and smelly gas jobs that are out there. So uh, maybe we'll even uh, see if we can get one of these on one of our shows sometime and, and demonstrate it for you. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll be back with some more coverage here at the 2016 ATA Show on uh, 100.5 Sports Fan ESPN Radio. Well, folks, I can tell you that if you're looking for an awesome buggy and something that's going to really tool around, uh, that torque is one great looking machine and Brandon I uh, I can't wait to get one of them up here for you and I to put through the uh, tests I guess and see just how well it holds up but uh, it's got some excellent suspension on it definitely looks like something that uh, we'd like to run around with on our ranches and also for our outfitter friends that are out there listening you're looking for a way to get your people to and from the stands without making them smell like gas and without making a lot of noise, this thing is definitely an awesome buggy. And yes, it can haul an animal back out on the front and the back. It doesn't look like it in some of the pictures you're going to see. But trust me, we'll go ahead and uh, and help you figure all that out. When you get it, we'll show you where, where these animals can go. One, it goes over the front and one goes on a rack on the back. I like the option that you can plug a generator into this thing and get some continued use out of it. Um, you know, so if you're out trail riding... But uh, this is a great, great looking little unit and definitely made for the hunter, the outdoorsman. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with some more coverage of the 2016 ATA show and bring you some more new products right after this. 